Well, I decided to get all dressed up today in my fancy straw hat. Is that called? It's not a straw well, hat. It's, kind it's of like, a hat. It's a hat, it's but it's it. not like the, the fascinators that all of the royals and guests and of the, guests. the uh, royal wedding are going to yes. be wearing this weekend. Yeah. But we thought, or tomorrow actually, it for is the, tomorrow. yeah, on yeah. Saturday, yeah. on the 19th of May. For okay. the royal wedding. Right. So, in honor of uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, we decided we would do something a little bit something English. A little British. Little British, British today. Yeah. So, we're, yeah. we're going we're to make some, some buttermilk scones. Okay. And you have made blueberry We've scones. We've done scones in the past mm -hmm. on a show, but this time it's just no fruit, no kind of flavoring. It's just a plain buttermilk scone. So, we're going to go with that. And my yeah. good friend Karen Fisher, who actually has a beautiful English tea or beautiful English gardens at her house, yeah. does um, the English, you know, high tea, which we've actually catered for her mm -hmm. the last couple of years. Couple so yeah. she's uh, loaning me some hats and actually the buttermilk scone recipe, which we made for right. one of the tea parties. So we are going to start out with. Uh, using this our is food real processor. Simple, and you're going to keep me away from this, yes. right? Because I always make a mess. Right. Gotcha. So, two cups of flour, three tablespoons of granulated sugar. I know you just want to get right in there. I do. A half a teaspoon of baking soda, three teaspoons of baking powder, about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. A little That's more. pretty good. A little more. Yeah. A little bit more. Uh, that's short of a quarter, but there's salt in the butter we're going to use, so I think that'll balance out. Actually, I think I got some. Well, yeah, maybe there is. We, we try to use unsalted butter, if possible. And what we have discovered is for making scones, using frozen butter really works mm -hmm. well because it does, you don't want the, the dough to get too soft. And so just six tablespoons and just cut it into... Yeah. And a lot of the and a lot of the scone recipes will tell you to mix in the butter with your hands, you know, fork it in and mix it in. But that's really we found we discovered that this is really a handy way of doing it. Is put it in a, a food processor. And yeah, just tap it a few times, pulse it a few times, and we're good to go. Okay. And you're do that? So we're all set. Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to turn it on to on right now. Okay. And then when we're Chop ready to butter. to get it all chopped up, if you think. I'm going to let you put some flour on your, your sheet. Okay. Okay, so I think that's good. That's so you just good. kind of let it be like that, right? Yep. Okay. And then, and then we are going to in. pour in two-thirds of a cup of buttermilk. In other recipes, I think the scone recipe we did Previously, we put in sour cream. It's egg and sour cream makes it a. It's a, just a little bit different texture when you're done. But this is going to be different with the buttermilk. And, and this time, I'm just going to pulse it yep, a little bit because that's what you want, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Just so that it kind of all. Notice how Ruthie is asking me how to do this because I'm the scone maker in this, in this operation. She okay. took over for the for the camera today because she didn't want to mess all over. So, but I made the mess here already, so we're we're in good shape. How much more do you here? Do you let me. Like? Yeah, we'll yeah, just keep going. Yeah, we're just gonna keep going here till it gets, okay. till it gets I a little. Just couldn't take. I know it till it gets a, a little bit pasty. You can see it's getting crumbled, getting kind of clumpy, and that's how you want it. It's clumping up now nicely. Now it's clumpy and pasty and. That's what your product looks like when we're ready to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to dump it onto a floured cookie sheet. And then I'm going to take out the remnants. Okay. Some recipes will tell you to take the whole batch and put it, form it into a ball and work it a little bit. I like to form it into two sections, sections and then and then you can either do um, large scones. Yeah, this, or you can do mini scones. Yeah, we can do some minis. Oh, you can right. do large ones out of this too. But what you do is you kind of get a little flour me, on it. It's on there so that it keeps no, from moving. Does it matter? Oh, okay, I can kind of hold it for you. Oh, and while Gary's doing that, I'm going to crack one egg, and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of water, and 
again, a little bit of a, a difference is that um, this is an egg this wash, gonna egg wash. That we're gonna, he's going to go put top. on top. Now you notice I am working this into a, like a pancake shape, if you will, and need it about a half to three quarters of an inch thick and round up the, or flatten up the edges like so. And we'll do this to the other one as well. This is, again, another one of those recipes that I thought, you know, scones seemed like they'd be very labor intensive, you know, and we didn't really ever make scones until somebody requested, I think. A couple that, of years ago, right. Yeah, that we do scones for a, an event. Right. Now, this type of scone is really easy to make in terms of handling it versus the blueberry or the cranberries because especially blueberries that get fruit and you're trying to work the blueberries into this dough and it gets all mushy and it squirts out all over but these are so much easier to make because there's no fruit to have to deal with okay so we got it rounded out use a pizza cutter and you could make them into six or eight pieces and i'm just going to make them small we're going to go eight like that, and like that. It's that easy. It just too easy. It's just too easy. Now, so did you get this greased a little bit? Just lightly grease it with some Crisco. And we're gonna put these on here. I was gonna say throw them on here, but we're not throwing them tonight, today. We are placing them. And then while I do that, Ruth is going to do the egg wash. You want to keep them about, should keep about a half inch apart. They do expand a little bit, so separate them. Otherwise, they'll be all stuck together. And I'm not sure if the egg wash is for the purpose of keeping the sugar on that Gary's going to sprinkle on when he's done, or if it's... It, it just makes it set I nice. I think it just gives it a nice, uh, a nice little shine to it. And while Ruthie's doing that, I'm just going to sprinkle a little white granular sugar on there. And if a person wanted to, I also thought about you could put some cinnamon, but these are just plain English scones. You could I'm gonna say you could have put some cinnamon powder in with the sugar. When I was looking for some recipes, I, I noticed that a lot of the recipes are kind of bland, mm -hmm. and I think that's also why they they yeah. probably just have it, right. you know, just plain like that. Yeah. Well, and why they also have it plain is because we're going to be having other little delicacies that you're going to right. be, you know, eating. In with, English with, tea, you have sandwiches, and you have other little desserts and things like that. Right, but, exactly. Yeah, this so is a very basic. Our oven is, is preheating to 425. Okay. And we're going to bake it, um, f the pan for 10 to 12 minutes. Okay. And the last okay. time I did it was 10 minutes and it was nice and brown. So okay. let's do the 10. You can always check on it. There we go. Give it 10. So we just happened to have made some scones this morning. So we're going to have a little English tea party. I made, I made the scones this morning. So I actually have everything all set to go, and our videographers are going to join us at the table. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Great. Let's do that. What we have made are some of the items that I've made, like for Karen Fisher, when, mm -hmm. I, when we've done her high tea party. Mm -hmm. And I heard on the news today that the royals will not be having high tea. They're as we high. don't have high tea because we don't have the cucumber sandwiches and some of these other so little the high delicacies. Is more, more involved. Exactly, more food. yeah. So this, this is, is more of just like morning or afternoon tea. Okay. Okay. Right. So we have tea made, and I do happen to actually have English spode mm -hmm. china. And um, the scones are beautiful that you made this morning. Yeah. And with the scones, I made a, a lemon. 
curd. Okay. So you can, can put some of the lemon curd on your scone. Okay. Or you can put a jelly. This happens to be a very hot, hot pepper jelly. Pepper One jelly. Of my favorites, so. But you can use raspberry, you know, jelly if, if you want. Mm -hmm. um, in here we have Devonshire cream. Okay. And that's made by Ooh, whipping yeah. whip whipped cream, whipping the whipped cream. And um, powdered sugar. A little bit of powdered sugar and then just add some sour cream. Okay. Okay. And then to our little tea that we're having, I also have shortbread. Okay. And shortbread, even though when you buy it in the store, mm -hmm. it's the Walker's Scottish, you know, shortbread. Mm -hmm. yeah. But doing a little bit of history, we found out that this actually started back in the 12th century mm -hmm. and all of the British Isles yeah. um, ate yeah. shortbread. But when shortbread actually started, um, they had yeast in it. Right. which made it more of a like a biscuit type right. bread mm -hmm. and then when they took the yeast out they added a whole lot of butter and the short bread part means uh, that it's like crumbly it yeah. kind of crumbles um, so much different than the yeast we call them short. Yeah. yeah so now we are going to invite our, our uh, videographers Brett and Brianna to come and join us for tea all right okay Fantastic. let's do this okay So I hope the royals are very happy. I hope that they have at least 41 years of marriage like, like we have. And um, I guess we'll probably be up at 4 a.m. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, it's oftentimes yeah. we're awake at 4, when 4.30 the people, anyway. So we when our viewers see up. this, they'll already be married. But we yes. probably will have gotten up at 4 or 5 in the morning Most likely. Yeah. Um, to see the wedding. Yeah. So anyway, I hope everybody has enjoyed this episode of A Slice of Heaven, a little bit of an English little twist you know, to it. A twist. Yeah. So until next time, happy cooking. Are we um, going to be almost set to go here? Are you in charge of this? I'm in charge. This time? As always? Every time? Okay. <laughs> yeah. These things are a little tight. It shows my little pooch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's very nice. Calm down. No, no, I was just checking this. Test the butter. Is that going to be okay? That's really good. Black works really well on flour. Well, you can see where the dirty parts are. <laughs> you can also see this is a little bit too tight. Oh. Are you kidding me? I had flour in Not my hands. Not kidding at all. Here. Amazing, isn't it?